Track 26. Section 4. You will hear a lecture on changes in family structure. First, you will have 20 seconds to look at questions 1 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 10. We are all familiar with the nuclear family, which has been the dominant family structure in the UK for the last 60 years at least. However, recent changes show that our idea of the traditional nuclear family as the cornerstone of British family life is changing. There have been emerging patterns which are eroding this structure, namely the rise of step families, cohabitation, lone parenting and the rapid increase in those living alone. We are going to explore these areas in turn and look at their effect in terms of the family. Firstly, step families are becoming more and more common. Step families are created when one or both partners have a child or children from a previous relationship. In 1980, the percentage of children under 13 who were living with one parent and their new partner was just 4%. In 2008, this figure had increased to 20%. The USA has seen an even greater rise. New statistics show that almost half of under-13s are living in a step family. Now, we can still call the step family structure a nuclear family, as it does follow the structure of two parents and dependent children. However, it also creates somewhat of a nuclear blur. Step brothers and sisters may belong to two family units, so where do we draw the line at which family they belong to? Cohabitation, when partners do not marry yet live together as a family, has also increased. In 2006, of the 17.5 million families in Britain, nearly 3 million of these comprised unmarried couples. What does this mean to the nuclear family? Firstly, the traditional view of a nuclear family requires married parents, so we can't put these types of family under this umbrella. Statistics show that even if cohabiting couples have children, they are more likely to separate than their married equivalents. Lastly, we need to look at the rise of the DINCS, which stands for Dual Income No Kids. As Clark and Henwood outline, many cohabiting couples are choosing a life without children, putting consumer spending first. Lone parenting is a relatively recent family structure, which has rapidly grown in the last half century. In 1972, only 1 in 14 children lived in a lone parent family. When we compare this with today's figure of 1 in 4, we can see that this is a rapid increase. In the past, lone parenthood was overwhelmingly the result of a death of a parent. Nowadays, however, it is increasingly a choice. Some sociologists argue that this increase is due to the outlook of women. Where women once were willing to accept an unhappy or abusive marriage, now many will choose lone parenthood. Often, this can be just a transitory phase before they find a new partner. This view of women's attitudes and lone parenting is highly debated because some figures show that the largest group of lone parents are mothers who have never married. You can find counter-arguments for these ideas in Butler and Jones. One difficulty for single parents is that they are a social group who are much more likely to suffer from poverty and hardship. They are more likely to live in rented accommodation and have childcare issues. Lastly, an increasing number of people are choosing to live alone. The number of people living alone in Britain has more than doubled in the last 20 years. In 1990, just over 4 million people lived alone. Now this figure has reached 8.5 million, an incredibly rapid growth which has had enormous effects on the traditional nuclear family. This number represents a great chunk of the population who either by choice or necessity are outside the traditional family unit. Some think that these changes may not help the community. In fact, there are many arguments that this rise in alternative household structures will create a more isolationist and less community-based society, where close bonds, which are usually formed within the family, have no place. 
leaving aside whether or not the housing even exists for this boom, an important factor which must be looked at is the disproportionate expense for those living on their own. By this I mean the burden of all costs is shouldered by one wage instead of two, and of course one person is using the energy which could be shared between a group, having a greater impact on the environment too. However, on a more positive note, people, especially women, are proving to be extremely... That is the end of the listening test. In the exam, you will have half a minute to check your answers. Track 27 Hi, Dad. How are you? I'm fine, Sally. How's the course going? It's going well, actually. I'm really enjoying my math course at the moment, mainly because it's not that difficult compared to the other modules. Good. And what about the tutors? What are they like? Well, I've got four, and they're all highly knowledgeable. But Professor Jones is my favorite. I really respond well to the way he teaches. And are your fellow students nice, too? Yes. I've made lots of new friends, and everyone seems to be very hardworking. The course has lots of group work, but to be honest, this isn't really the way I like to study. I prefer to study alone. Oh, well, I suppose not everything can be perfect. I know, Dad. You're right. In fact, there is one thing I'm a bit concerned about. My statistics module. I think I might not pass it. Well, let's wait and see, shall we? There's plenty of time to improve. Don't worry about it yet, okay? Thanks, Dad. I'll try not to. Track 28. A. Excuse me, can you tell me where the bank is, please? It's opposite the cinema, next to the supermarket. B. Excuse me, can you tell me where the bank is, please? It's round the corner from the supermarket. C. Excuse me, can you tell me where the bank is, please? It's up the road from the supermarket, beside the cinema. D. Excuse me, can you tell me where the bank is, please? It's at the opposite end of the street from the cinema. E. Excuse me, can you tell me where the bank is, please? It's behind the supermarket, which is near the cinema. Track 29. Hi, Jane. How are you settling into life at university? Fine, except I don't really know what there is to do in town. I haven't had time to look around yet. You've been here for a year. Could you give me some ideas? Of course. There's lots of places for students. Firstly, if you go across the bridge over the river outside the campus and turn left... Oh, no, sorry, that's the garage. Turn right, then you'll get to the bowling alley which is really popular at the weekends because it's so close to the campus. On Friday nights, they have a special discount for students. Oh, that's great. I love bowling. So, do you like sports, Jane? Yes. I go running and swimming, and I play badminton. In that case, there's a running track behind the university campus, and I think they have a badminton court at the sports centre. Actually, I'm happy just to run in the park. Well, there's a large park in town, too. If you go down the road opposite the bowling alley and take the first right, then you'll get to the park. It's quite big, and there's a lake in it. You can take a boat out on it. The university rowing team practice there. What about places to eat out? Are there any good student hangouts? Absolutely. There's the Elm Tree Cafe, which is down the road from the post office, in the opposite direction from the river. The cafe is on a fork in the main road, and it's quite an institution round here. OK. Well, I'll have to check it out. I'm looking for a part-time job, so maybe I'll be able to find work there. Hmm. You should try. They're always looking for new staff, and they often hire students. Now, have I forgotten any other important places? Oh, yes. You like sport, so I should mention the leisure centre. Don't get it confused with the swimming baths, which are down the road from the supermarket. The leisure centre is opposite. There aren't any swimming baths there, but you can get a student leisure card which will let you into both. So, you see, there is quite a lot to do in this town. It seems like there is. Well, thanks for all the information, Sophie. No problem. See you soon. Track 30 1 78A High Trees Street 
Sydney. 2316. 2. 354 Castle Avenue. Edinburgh. E5 7HU. 3. 86 The Drive. New York. 45008. Track 31. Hello. Have you come to enrol for your course or pay your fees? Um, both actually. OK, that's fine. You can enrol here with me and then go to the next desk for fee payment. So, first of all, can I have your name? Yes, it's Peter Taylor. That's Taylor with a Y. So, it's T-A-Y-L-O-R. That's right. Do you need my middle name? No, just your first and last name, thanks. And what course are you doing? I'm taking a BSc in Economics. OK, that's in the Faculty of Mathematics. Oh, I thought it was in the Faculty of Business and Management. It was last year, but the course has moved to the Mathematics Faculty this year. Oh, thanks for letting me know. No problem. Now, where are you going to be living? On campus or in private accommodation? University accommodation. I'm in room 112, Ashley Residence. Did you say Ashley Residence, the one in Duke Street? It's just that there's another residence called ASCII Residence, so it's confusing sometimes. I don't want to make a mistake on the computer records, otherwise you won't receive any university mail. It's definitely Ashley. A-S-H-L-E-Y. Great. And what about your home address? On our records it says 56 Grove Street, Manchester... M19JA. Is that correct? Actually, there's a small mistake. It's M4, not M1. The rest is correct. 9JA. OK, I think that's all. You're enrolled on your course, so you can go and pay your fees now. Thanks. Bye. Track 32. Hi there. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like to find out more information about the services here at the Students' Union. Of course, we're here to help you throughout your time at university. <laughs> so, what kind of help can you give me exactly? Well, our job focuses on three main areas. Giving advice and information to students, arranging social events and campaigning for students' rights. Right. And what about help with things relating to everyday life? Well, we have a team of six advisers who work part-time and have expertise in certain areas, including accommodation and travel. Oh, that's great. And how can I contact the advisers? Right. There are several ways. You can come into this office and speak to an advisor in person, or email us if you can't come in. And there's also a 24-hour helpline. You can find the helpline number on your student card. And you can call us at any time of day or night with any questions or worries you have. OK. And thanks for your help. You're welcome. Track 33. Section 1. You will hear a student asking for information at the university library. First, you will have 20 seconds to look at questions 1 to 4. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation related to this will be played first. Hi, how can I help you? I'd like to register to use the library, please. OK, that's fine. Now, can I have some details from you? What's your name and student ID number? Simon Anderson. That's A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. -E the student says that his name is Simon Anderson. So the answer on the form is Anderson. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Hi, how can I help you? I'd like to register to use the library, please. OK, that's fine. Now, can I have some details from you? What's your name and student ID number? Simon Anderson. That's A N D. E-R-S-O-N And ID number? Uh, hold on, let me look. It's A-N-D-1-0-5-7-6-3. 
A N D one zero five seven six nine. No, it's A N D one zero five seven six three. Thank you. And what course are you studying, Simon? Geography. Is that in the Faculty of Environmental Science or Earth Science? It's in the Earth Science Faculty. Right. Now, are you living in university halls of residence? No, I'm in private accommodation. Do you need my address? Yes, please. It's flat three, twenty-four Lavender Gardens, London, SW twelve three A G. Can you spell the street name for me? Yes, it's L A V E N D E R Gardens. And do you have a contact telephone number? Is my mobile number okay? Yes, that's fine. Just let me find my phone. Mm. Uh, right, the number is zero seven nine double eight five double six three four one. Let me just check that zero seven nine double eight five double six three four one. So, Simon, did you have a tour of the library facilities during your induction? Unfortunately, I missed it. Could you give me a quick tour now? Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have twenty seconds to look at questions five to ten.